Record of Lotus War revolves around a wannabe swordsman named Pran and his fellow adventurers who are trying to advert further warfare and save Lotus from oncoming evil. Hey, welcome back to the JHIP Show. As the title suggests, I'm going to be reviewing Record of the Lotus War, but keep in mind this is a review of only the OVA series and not the TV show. So if anything happens in the TV show that counter my negative opinions towards this show, keep in mind I haven't seen it, and I'm only judging the OVA as a standalone. Got it? Good. Starting with the positives, I love the aesthetic of this anime. It looks so good and so beautiful, so crisp. And the animation is very well done, especially for 1990. While I won't say that this show has a lot of interesting characters, in fact, quite a few of them are dull, I can say that a lot of them do look really cool, and the illustration is fantastic. Another positive I have for this show is that Lodos just seems like a cool place to explore in a video game. And this gives me a lot of JRPG vibes, and I can only assume that the person that recommended me this anime is a huge fan of JRPGs. And I can see why they will like this, especially if you're a huge fan of old 90s JRPGs like Chrono Trigger and some of the early Final Fantasy games. Because this gives me that vibe. It also kind of gives me the vibe of some old D&D campaign. And while it's not the most imaginative D&D campaign, I will say the setting is really cool. And... I would love to travel around in Lotus as a video game character. I think that would be neat. Uh, the characters that you meet in this show, the only one that really stood out for me is Dietlit. I thought Dietlit was the star of the show, and I kind of wish that she was the main focus of the story, and we'll get to the rest of the characters in my negatives, but I felt that Dietlit was... The one that had the most personality, she was very straightforward, and overall she's she's a badass. I mean, she's a high elf. My final positive for Record of Lotus War would have to be the music. The music is fantastic. Such an amazing score. The opening and EED were really good, and I let those play out. I, I love the, the sound of this anime. The sound effects themselves are really good, too. And I also watched this show with its Japanese sub. There is two different versions of the dub, and while they're fine, I, I prefer to watch this in its original Japanese, and I just felt everything was a bit more natural in that. But the dubs themselves, the Funimation dub and the original dub, were pretty good, so if you're going to watch this dubbed, either one will be fine, in my opinion. Moving on towards my negatives, while I do appreciate the D&D style storytelling that this is going for and the really cool setting, it has little imagination of its own. The only creative thing to come out of this would have to be the evil sword called the Soul Crusher that it took possession of its owner and had a giant eye as a hilt. It looks kind of cool, but it kind of reminds me of Soul Calibur. And a lot of the show is just boring. I don't know why, but Record of Lotus War has a huge fascination of tell, don't show, when there's a lot of instances in the show where they should be showing us and not telling us. Now, when I'm talking about Tell, Don't Show, there's uh, slight spoilers, but in the first episode, they're going on this journey to meet some old wizard to learn the weakness of the, the evil sorcerer, Carla the Grey. But in the next episode, they just announce that they have returned from seeing the wizard, learning all of her abilities, and it's like... Can't we see what happened during that? Like, did that really need to be cut out? Besides Dietlit, a lot of the characters were just so generic and they just fit their own archetype. Like, you got the elf, you got the white mage that can heal people, you got Pran, your everyday bad swordsman that just somehow becomes good. Like, my biggest problem with this show, again, falls in Tell Don't Show. But for the first few episodes, you see Pran just kind of being weak. He's not really that great of a swordsman. 
but by the end of the show, he just suddenly becomes better and he's able to take on the main villain when he would have easily died in any other circumstances. And I just wish there was some sort of training arc to see his progression to become a better swordsman throughout this show, and unfortunately they don't do that. Now, as, I'm, as I said in the beginning, I am only reviewing the OVA, and maybe there are some things in the TV show that'll change my mind, but a lot of these characters were very generic, and besides d I didn't really care about any of them. Overall, though, despite its major flaws, I still came out enjoying Record of Lotus War, and maybe the sequel TV show does improve a lot on a lot of the negatives I have for this, but it definitely sets up a really cool world, and I think if there was a D&D &D campaign and someone can come up with some interesting ideas, this could be a lot better. And it's not bad, I'm not trying to say it's bad, it's just pretty good. I can see why a lot of 90s kids watched this show back in the day and just loved it, but for me today, there's a lot of better stuff out there if I want to get a high fantasy fix. However though, if you want an interesting chapter in the history of anime, Record of Lotus War will definitely give you something. Just don't expect it to be as mind-blowing as some of the other classics like Cowboy Bebop. Big thanks to Warp Bait, my name is Doofy, and my Asma Senpai for supporting me on Patreon. You guys are awesome.